Well, hello everybody. This is Catherine Toon and uh, welcome. Uh, I just wanted to hop on today really quick and talk about something called new normals. Uh, new normals and new normals is a uh, is a phenomenon where you know we are adaptive human beings. We are we are resilient. The human race is incredibly resilient, right? And we've all been weathering this whole Corona COVID stuff. Good morning, Robert. Uh, and what happens is whenever we are stressed physiologically, uh, human beings, uh, I mean, you either crumple, which most people uh, have some resiliency unless they've been so beaten down, um, and you stretch and you uh, then are able to inhabit, so to speak, the area that you have been stretched to. So it's like uh, one of the ways that the Lord is conforming us into the image of Christ is that he is taking advantage of the challenges that force us to stretch. You know, we don't do good when uh, we're on perpetual vacation. Uh, we don't do good. You know, and it's interesting because one of the lies of kind of uh, maybe American, I'll just put it on us, or Western um, consumerism is that the good life is all about you make a ton of money and then you kick back and enjoy life. Um, except the problem with that, I mean, money's good. Uh, when Money's good. Money's a tool. So listen, a knife is really good until we stab one another, right? So <laughs> money just, just is good or bad depending on what it's used for. Uh, but when we're operating in a place of fear and we're treating money as an idol, say, then it's, it's destructive, right? And because we were called to be productive, we were not called to, uh, um, to, uh, to toil, Okay, uh, as Paul Young says, we weren't called to look to the ground to be our source, right? The ground was was intended to bless us, but not to be our source because God is our source. Uh, where we look to people, where women are tend to be more relational and they look to people. So Adam looked to the ground instead of to the Lord uh, to be his source and Eve looked towards Adam to be her source well, those are both jacked up, right? And so there is only one source and that is God. And so, uh, however that is, and so we were intended to be productive and fruitful. You know, uh, when when the Lord blessed uh, Adam, Adam and even said, be fruitful and multiply. So being fruitful means, man, it's not all about sitting on your hiney and, you know, popping grapes, you know, it is, <laughs> it is about being fruitful, but not toiling. And there, that's, that's the way the Lord has intended us to operate. So what happens is, is when we are stressed and stretched, good morning, um, there becomes a discomfort. Okay. We're stretched. And then there's a new normal. Okay. Now, hopefully the stretching, if, if the stretching comes as trauma, the new normal is not a good normal, right? Because trauma is not what you're, what, what was intended. But when the stretching comes in as I'm increasing my capacity, I'm increasing my love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. I have to be patient in a hard time. I have to uh, look uh, within where Christ is versus without where the seen realm is. That's a good stretch. Okay, is it comfortable? No, but uh, God, but it's not about our comfort. Uh, we, we are to receive comfort, though. In our discomfort, we are to receive comfort from the comforter. But that doesn't mean that things are going to be smooth sailing, that everything's going to be a green light, right? And so when we're being stretched and as we're doing that, we actually receive a new normal. And one of the things I do in so much of my coaching sessions is in the place where maybe we've learned, uh, good morning, Day, uh, Derek Day. Yeah, I'm sorry about um, the hiccups, Robert. 
that's just it, right, Derek? It is all about growth, right? If we're not growing, really, it's like we're either green or growing or red and rotting. It's really true. And we flourish. You know, when something is flourishing, that means it is growing and it is producing fruit. And when it's not flourishing, that means it's withering and it's not producing fruit. And so we're called to be fruitful, be fruitful to multiply. Ding, 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 ding. Think I heard that somewhere before, right? But our new normal comes as we expand in our capacity and then we kind of own that capacity. You know, I, I, yesterday I was talking about how uh, the Israelites, one of the ways that they took the promised land, it's such a great picture, is that they were in the promised land, okay? So you were in Christ, you were in the promised land, right? You were in Christ, okay? Um, and the, it's all in there. It's just like Prego, it's all in there, okay? But as uh, but they're giants in the land. What are the giants? The giants are the mindsets, are the limitations or maybe the woundings and the traumas that you've experienced that created lies that are affecting your ways of being, how you see yourself, how you see God, how you see others, whatever that is. And so as you're in, uh, as you're in, as, as you're expanding the promised land, right? Well, crap, there's giants in there. There's thought patterns and ways of being and maybe hurts that need to be healed. Okay. And so as you're contending with those giants, I'm not, I'm not, not giving, the devil lots of uh but i'm just saying the crappy ways of being mindsets and things um and so as you're contending with those okay and those are coming down you flush them out of that place you are actually literally owning the space that the giant was occupying okay but let me say this so you need to occupy that space so that means that means a new normal that means i have got all this increased space that i need to be uh, managing well that I need to be tending um, and making fruitful, right? And that I need to be operating in his mind because otherwise the giants come back in and you lose the ground. So whatever those giants are for you in your mindsets, in your ways of being, in fears, um, in lies you're believing, in limitations you're believing, you know, not everything is trauma. Sometimes things are just, uh, you have limited uh, perspectives of uh, what you can do and what you can be in the image and likeness of God. And as you're owning that space, okay, then you can expand further. And so a lot of the problem that the Israelites face that we face, it's such a great picture, uh, allegorical picture of um, uh, is when is when they would expand, but they wouldn't occupy. So the giants would come back in and they lose ground and you're doing this back and forth. Well, listen, this is why we we grow from glory to glory to glory. Why? Because the level of glory that um, that you're at now that the Lord has brought you out of, has unveiled in you. Okay, I'm not saying you're not 100% glory. I'm saying it's revealed, it's unveiled incrementally. Why? Because you occupy that new normal of glory. This is how I operate. Uh, you know, one of the things I was thinking about this morning is I used to be one of those people that would apologize and then I would apologize for, I was constant, it was ridiculous, right? Like, excuse me, I'm breathing, I need to apologize. Well, like, uh, forget that noise. <laughs> I have recovered, but it took a while, right? So I needed to realize that there was an issue. I need to have the Lord minister to my heart where I felt like, wow, if I had mass and took up space, I need to apologize for that issue. Well, you know, like not happening. <laughs> so, but you know, I don't want to be arrogant, but so that's created what? A level of confidence that sometimes can be mistaken for arrogance, by the way. Um, and it's not, it's just confidence, right? I know I am very well aware of my source that I am not in and of myself, right? So you occupy that space and you, and, and you own that space. You reveal that level of glory, right? And you own it. So it can be a blessing. Crap. If you're constantly apologizing, that is not a blessing to people. That is actually annoying, but it's also like, wow, you're not actually not giving because you're actually focusing on yourself and your deficiency versus who you are and what you have to offer. Why? Because God made you. So like you don't apologize for what God made. Yes. <laughs> good, good thought right there. <laughs> so you occupy that space and then you expand further. You get a new normal and you learn what that new normal is. So the coronavirus, which is so interesting because it's creating a strain globally. 
at the same time, we're all feeling the same strain versus all of us with our little varieties of strain, right? While we're going through our little varieties of strain. So we have this in common. Oh my goodness, this is such an opportunity for upgrade, such an opportunity. What is God doing? You know, it was interesting. We, we did a program yesterday, a group of us um, with Mike Senker and Lynn Bennett and, and, and Paul Young. And it was all about where is God in the midst of this? Like he is smack dab in the midst of it. And man, there are upgrades on this side. Why? Because God will take advantage of every strain, every setback, every wounding you have. Okay. He didn't cause the wounds. He didn't cause the setbacks, right? So let, let's not tar his face and point a finger that he's not good, but he will take advantage of it. Yeah, he will take he will take advantage of all these setbacks to upgrade. That is the word I keep on getting. And so that means what is there is if there's an upgrade, there is a new normal. And let me say this. Let's say you won, um, you know, you won the lottery and you got three million dollars or something. OK, you know what? There is a strain with success. People don't talk about it as much because it seems like people are trying to push to be successful, right? Because that is a thing, but there's also a strain with success. That's why you see so many people spin out. So what happened is they got uh, an upgrade, but they weren't able to su sustain it. And usually that is because, let me just help you here. Oh my goodness. That is because they were, their identity and their security and their significance and their value were all connected in with their success. So if, listen, if you're not okay without it, you're not going to be okay with it. Okay. But when, when, um, when you are okay without it, you know, that is a key time for promotion. All the times when I've had promotion, so to speak, it's been because I actually didn't need it. Isn't that interesting? Or it was nice to have, it was good to have, but I was okay without it. And isn't that amazing? That's a place of humility that God can bless because God will exalt the humble. Now, the humble is not saying like I used to be when I was apologizing for myself all the time. No, humble is saying, you know, you are all everything that I'm saying you are and you're not what I'm not saying you are. <laughs> and I can use you in the place where you're resting in me. You're looking into me that I am your source. Right. And that you're not looking to something else. You're not looking to the ground that men tend to do uh, as their source, like, you know, the t working at working of their hands. And you're not looking towards um, uh, people, uh, you know, as your source. Everything's a conduit. Everything's a blessing. Right. Yeah. But we are not confused and that we are everything that God says we are. And we're not what he's not saying we are. And we're also in process. You know, some of it is a maturation process. And, you know, I came to the ministry game rather late ministry as ministry game uh, ministry. We call it rather late in the game uh, for me. I'm I'm 50. Four. I have to think about that. Um, and I, that's good. I, I'm happy. I'm good. You know, just keep that youth renewal thing going, Jesus, and that that you know all of that good stuff, right? Because I got stuff to do. Um, but in that place, right? You know, my learning curve is. I haven't been in the game doing this as long as so many of my other compadres who are so amazing, and so it's a learning curve. So it's a stretching, right? And so I've done stretching in this newer arena, right? As I'm stretching in that, you know what? It's a new normal and there's a way of being. And how do I navigate that? Because it's got to look like me and not like someone else. And you need to look like you and not like someone else. And you know what? H how you are with you and Jesus is completely unique. And so you're discovering what does that look like with me and Jesus, right? Because I love all my my compadres. I love so many people. I'm like, dang, you are so amazing, fragrantly amazing. I was going to say stinking, but <laughs> fragrantly amazing. But but that's not me, right? So you get to be you. I get to me, be me. And sometimes in the place where you're your people, don't you people don't always understand you. Don't don't always get you. Anybody been misunderstood? <laughs> I can see <laughs> the hands going up. That is a pretty level. Uh, playing ground. And, you know, that is actually very, very common. So, but you know what, you just keep on doing you, you just keep on being upgraded as you in your new normals um, and, and own them 
and 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 yield yourself to the process because you know someone the person that is conforming you into the image of christ and conforming to you as christ in this world right and your flavor of christ in this world not that you are christ but you're one with christ it's you and him doing this thing together him doing his stuff through you uh unveiling you um you keep on doing that you keep on growing and keep on being that gift keep on being that gift to people even if people don't get you even if people misunderstand you and honestly understand that we also all have a learning curve so we've not mastered it we're all growing and that's awesome so we can be oh my goodness patient with one another in our learning curve in our growing process in our detoxing from religion in our you know figuring out the next thing that we have to figure out in our healing from wounds that have happened all of that we can be patient with one another we are in this together we really are one uh, we look like love on the planet and we're looking like that in increasingly more and more accurate and um, life-giving ways uh, and, you know, and we, we can own our upgrades. We can own uh, what we need to need to need to own as we're learning new normals as individuals and as and globally. Right. Isn't that amazing? Anyway, I hope this has been a blessing for you today. Uh, just an update for the uh, How to Hear God mini from God mini book. I mean, I know a lot of you hear him great. So, you know, all of that. Uh, sometimes we all can be upgraded in that as well, right? Hearing more uh, from a flowing status and hearing him in the places where we're shut down. Because a lot of times where you're shut down and heard is where it's hardest to hear. Anyway, so this is meant to be a blessing. Uh, it's about 60 pages, still working really hard on it. <laughs> we just hit some stags. Um, so that should be coming out May 1st. I was hoping to get it out to you by April 15th, not happening, <laughs> came and went <laughs> without fanfare, but that should be out May 1st. So we're working on that and that will be absolutely free. So, wow, download that. I'll, you guys will be linked to it whenever and uh, and share it. Uh, you know, it does me no good if, if I, I work this hard on something and it reaches five people, <laughs> but if it just reaches five people, God bless the five. You be, get down with your bad self, you five people. Anyway, I love you. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.